yeah today we are going to read about man position and man presentation so this is the picture which says that baby can be in any of the position inside the womb so what is mal mal position and mal presentation they can be the left anterior the mal position and mal presentation is that the baby is catholic in the mal position that means the head is in uh, the lower segment and in the mal presentation it can be anything in the lower segment okay so in the mal position we talk about mostly the position is occipito anterior that the occiput is towards the pubic symphysis so in the mal position we have the uh, the occiput in the posterior direction which is a occipito posterior position so we have left and right occipito anterior position which are the normal present normal uh, presentation and position but mal presentation can be anything except vertex uh, in the mal position we have just a vertex presentation to celic position and in the mal presentation we have except vertex like face brow bridge shoulder core and the complex presentation it can be anything so it can, comes under a, a category of mal presentation now why we have this mal presentation and mal position they can be a defect in power passage and passenger in obstetrics we th or talk about these three things okay during the delivery power means that the be, uh, the mother has uh, you know, the uterus the mother uterus can be uh, is is generate is going to generate some you know contraction that will lead to uh, the delivery of the baby so they can be defect in the power like the abdomen is pendulous there is laxity of the abdomen muscles so it can lead to mal presentation uh, it, and uh, then we have the dextro rotation of the uterus in the dextro rotation it will favor occipito posterior position they can be defect in the passage passage means in, in the general terminology we think that what is a passage passage means the pelvis through which the baby will deliver so passage will include just मैम मैम भी बोल रहे थे कि ऑडियो नहीं आ रहा है तो मैम नहीं मैं मैम स्टार्ट ब्रॉडकास्टिंग तो मैंने कर दी अनमिर से क्या हुआ मैम कुछ देखती हूँ मैम मैं कुछ करती हूँ कि मेरा ऑडियो क्यों नहीं आ रहा है Am I audible now?
Nem meg a Ariel Nem kell nem úgy, hogy tenni kell a lajszkét, mert ez kicsit olyan pszichi a váz. A lényi student még egy gyere, a lényi már el. Csikim. मैम आज मैं मोड़ी हूँ आना शुरू हो गया आप लोगों का सेट कर सकते हैं क्या क्योंकि मैम एक बनाया कुछ है शुरू करा ना यहाँ पे सिग्नल आ जा रहा है मेट्रो में हूँ मैं आज जस्ट इसे कैट में जस्ट हेलो करीमा हाँ मैम कैन यू हेयर मी नाउ अभी नहीं अब मुझे फोन पे सुनाई दे रहा है उस पे दे रहा है समझ के नहीं आएगा हाँ एक बार फोन करते हैं किस चिकन चिकन दोबारा करते हैं हेलो मैं मैंने स्टार्ट वो फर्स्ट तो ना स्टार्टिंग में ही कर दिया था जब मैंने सेशन शुरू किया था तभी अच्छा ठीक है ना हाँ जी मैं ठीक है हेलो मेरी मैं सात तरह यू नॉटिबल ओके हाँ यू आर नॉटिबल ठीक है मैम ठीक है So I think I'm audible now. Uh, so I'm going to start again. We were talking about malpresentation and uh, malpresentation and malpositions. So in malposition and malpresentation, what is the main difference? In the malposition, we have this occipital posterior position in which the presenting part is vertex, and if we have anything other than vertex, then it's a mal uh, presentation thing. Uh, in the mild position, we have cephalic, uh, cephalic in the lower cephalic part in the lower part with the vertex in as the presenting portion. So, uh, mild presentation can be anything as like face, brow, breech, shoulder, cord, and complex presentation. Then, when we talk about these causes of mild presentation and mild position, they can be defective power, passage, and passenger. So in the power, we have this interless abdomen, lexicity of the abdomen wall. So power will come from the abdomen and the uterus. So either we have some problem in the abdomen wall and or in the uterus, in which there is an extra rotation in the uterus, which favors occipital posterior position. Then we have defect in the passage. Passage is, we talk about the pelvis. So pelvis can be a contracted pelvis, which can lead to malpresentation, malposition, or Android pelvis or pelvic tumor. So there is something is some obstruction is there which can lead to uh, mal position and malpresentation. Uterine anomalies such as biconvex uterus, septic uterus, or the fibroid uterus, 
or they can be the placenta which is low lying that's why it's preventing the head or the you know the presenting part the presenting part is not as normal so it is a mal presentation then there can be defect in the passenger passenger is our baby so they can be problem with the baby like the preterm fetus there is injury trend death macrosomia multiple pregnancy polyhydromyos congenital anomalies like an encephalitis and hydrocephalus and oils of the cord around the neck which favor the face presentation so they can be cord around the neck which can favor the face presentation then we have signs this two of mal presentation there is when the uh, pendulous abdomen then there is no engagement of the presenting part for the last 3 to 4 weeks in the primary gameta we have p prom or preterm rupture of embryo or we have delayed in the descent of the presenting part during labor so by these signs we can elicit that there can be uh, the the sign that it can lead to mal presentation so delayed engagement and there is delay in the descent of the head so if we they suggest that the baby can be in the mal presentation <laughs> so what are the complication of this mal presentation and mal presentation because the head in the normal position which is occiput to anterior position and the occiput is anterior that means that occiput is towards the cervix so we we will simplify this then we have this mal position uh, mal position things in which the most common one is the occiput to posterior in the occiput to posterior the occiput is towards the sacrum not towards the pubic surfaces so because of this thing they can be be prom or premature rupture of membrane and Uh, premature rupture of membrane is one complication another one is the cord presenting cord presentation and cord prolapse because in the mal position or mal presentation in both the things the head is not very well applied to the cervix so they can be spaced so it will lead to the cord presentation and the cord prolapse it can also lead to long labor due to hypotonic and hypotonic contractions or obstructive labor or rupture fetus there is increase incidences of instrumental and the operative delivery increase incidences of trauma to the genital tract increase incidence of postpartum hemorrhage and peripheral infections in these cases and there are increased chances of the perinatal mortality as well as meconium aspiration and infection and trauma to the genital organ is more with the cases of the mal presentation mal presentation so today we are primarily talking about occipital posterior position so what is the definition of occipital posterior position it is vertex presentation with the fetus back directed posterior it occurring 10% of the both onset of the labor so that's what i was telling about that occipital posterior is that the occiput is towards the pubic surfaces so uh, normally it is uh, anterior so that means it is towards this uh normally uh, the occiput is towards the pubic surfaces but in the occiput posterior position this occiput is you know it's uh, towards the sac so that's the main difference so it occur in 10% of the labor rp is more common because in the left side we have this sigmoid cone which occupy this space so there is less so left left of the diameter is reduced by the presence of the sigmoid cone that's why the right side is more common the right oblique diameter is slightly longer than the left so the rp or right occipital posterior position is more common than the left occipital posterior position we can be dextro rotation which favor r o p so what is the etiology behind it so i have first they have talked about the three things so all the things will be related to all these three things which i tell you like power passage and the passenger these three things we normally talk about so all the things will be related to uh, the related to the these three uh, parts of it so firstly the shape of the pelvis in the anthropoid and the android pelvis there are more chances or there are more incidence of the malpresentation Uh, due to the narrow foot uh, pelvis, the vaginal kyphoscoliosis, the convexity of the fetal bed fits with the convexity of concavity of the lumbar kyphosis. Then we have anterior placenta. That means the fetus usually faces the placenta.
uh, the causes can be placenta previa, pelvic tumors, ventilus abdomen, polyhydromnos, and multiple pregnancy. The deflex head of fetus is high pelvic inclination and the primary pelvic pelvic. <laughs> Now, how we diagnose it during the pregnancy? So, the abdominal examination in the surgery or in all the departments we have read that there is inspection, there is palpation, there is auscultation, and uh, then we on the, in the gynec family they don't talk about the palpation. So, I'm, I'm going to tell you that what are we going to see on the inspection? On the inspection, the abdomen looks flattened below umbilicus. This is the one sign which suggests that there can be a occipital posterior position. A groove may be seen below the umbilicus corresponding to the neck. The fetal movements may be detected during near the midline. In the umbilical grip, the back felt anteriorly with difficulty in the flank, and the anterior shoulder is at least three inches from the midline. Limbs are easily felt near or both sides of the midline. So we can see that in the occipital posterior position, the limbs are near the midline. Okay, and the you know the inspection we can see that there is flattening below the umbilicus. Then when we go for uh, this examination, uh, we can detect this thing that limbs are easily felt near yeah. the headline. On the pelvic grip, the head is usually not engaged due to deflex. So the head is deflex that is not going to go into not going to cross the pelvic brim. Also, what is engagement? Engagement is when the head crosses the pelvic brim, which is an inlet of the pelvis. So, in a man presentation, what in the man presentation, what happened is in the occipital posterior position that it's not going to engage or they, there is going to be a delayed engagement due to deflection. The head feels smaller and easily palpable from the palpating finger as they catch the bitemporal diameter instead of BPD in occipital anterior. Okay. On the auscultation, uh, we have FHS which is held in the flank away from the midline. In the direct occipital position, or direct occipital posterior position, direct means that I'll tell you that what happened when the baby is you now in the occipital posterior position, it can rotate one eighth of the circle and it can become posteriorly and it can become direct occipital posterior. At that time, the FSH may be heard, the fetal heart can be heard in the midline. So it, we can diagnose it by the USG or the diagnosis by the clinical only, or we can take the help from the USG, extremely mm -hmm. usually. During labor, in addition to the previous examination, the vaginal examination will reveal this elongated bag of membrane formation. The direction of the oxy foot and the degree of deflection can tell us about the occipital posterior position. So now we can see in this diagram that there is this is anterior fontanelle, which is a diamond shaped structure. There is a posterior fontanelle. Okay, then the posterior fontanelle is lying onto the sacrum. So this is a occipital posterior position. So what I was telling about in the direct occipital position uh, position is that. This head rotate one eighth of the circle, and it will become completely. You no, know, it's become uh, into the it lies into the sacrum. When it's first third one three eighth of the circle, it rotate one eighth of the circle, and it directly lying onto the sacrum. This is direct occipital posterior position. So, what are the mechanisms of labor uh, during this uh, occipital posterior position? The deflection is always there due to a position of the convexities of the fetals and the maternal spine. The longer PPT enter to the narrow sacrocortical diameter, while the shorter bitemporal diameter enter to the longer oblique diameter. Okay, so for this you have to know, know about all the diameters, all the fetal diameter and the maternal diameter also. So if you talk about the diameter of the fetal skull, they can be you know, this uh, suboccipital pragmatic, which is 9.5 centimeter, which is, these are the uh, anterior posterior diameters, okay? So in which we have the most common suboccipital pragmatic, which is 9.5, occipital posterior, occipital frontal, which is 10.5. So during uh, this occipital posterior position, the common diameter is suboccipital or occipital frontal, which is around uh, 
suboccipital frontal, which is around 10.5 centimeter because head is slightly defixed. <laughs> so, engaging AP diameter and longer occipital frontal diameter and suboccipital frontal diameter enter the pelvis, leading to delayed engagement. Because the large, larger diameter is entering into the pelvis, it will lead to delayed engagement. The degree of deflection determines the mechanism of labor. So, according to that, there can be mechanism of labor in the normal mechanism. Normal mechanism means normally what happens is in an occipital posterior position in 90% of the time, the text to deflection is corrected and complete traction will occur. And the occiput, which was there at the three eighth of the circle, it take a long run and it's come anteriorly, bringing the occiput anteriorly below the pubic symphysis and the fetus is delivered normally. So the occiput made the pelvic floor first. The long anterior rotation by 3 8 of the circle occur, bringing the occiput anteriorly and the fetus is delivered normally. Abnormal mechanisms which occur in 10%, ten, total 10%, they can be deep transverse arrest. What is a deep transverse arrest? Is that during the, during the rotation, in the mild, one eighth of the rotation occiput rotates one eighth anteriorly and head is arrested in the transverse diameter. So I can explain by this diagram that if it's it was there at three eighth of the circle, so what happened is this rotate one eighth of a circle, this line will be straight like this. So this in the, this in the transverse diameters, and if it's going to be remain there for one, more than one hour, then we label it as deep transverse arrest. Okay. Then what is persistent occipital posterior? That the baby is in the in the same position in uh, that that if, if we see this diagram, then the, it will remain in this position. This is persistent occipital posterior position. So what all are the possibilities that it can rotate in the end of the circle and the occipital bow anteriorly, which occur in 90% of the population. It can rotate one eighth of the circle anteriorly and become a deep transverse arrest if there is if it's going to be there for more than one hour of duration and with rupture membrane. So we label this as deep transverse arrest. It can also go posteriorly, then we call it as direct occipital posterior position. And it also it, the other possibility is that it's going to be remain in the same position, then we call it as persistent occipital posterior position. So persistent occipital posterior position occur in three percent of the population. In moderate deflection, occiput and sinciput meet the pelvic floor simultaneously, no internal rotation, and head persists in the oblique diameter only. In the deep transverse arrest and the persistent occipital posterior position, no further progress occur and labor is arrested as a head cannot be delivered. So it will lead to obstructed labor. Then they can be direct occipital posterior position, which occurs in 6% of the population, and it can lead to phase to pubis delivery. In the marked deflection, the sensiput meet the pelvic floor first, rotate by one eighth of the circle anteriorly, and the occiput become direct posterior. In the direct occipital posterior position, the head can be delivered by flexion. By the flexion, the head can be delivered. So, and supposing the uterine contraction is strong and there is no contracted pelvis, in the, or they can be an anthropoid pelvis in which the anterior posterior diameter are wrong. The renal restriction are more liable to occur as vulva is distended by a large occipital frontal diameter of 12.5 centimeters, and perineum is overstretched by the large ox, large occipital. So, it can be delivered the head normally because by extension, but in a phase to pubis delivery, it, it delivered by flexion. So, but in this delivery, there are more chances of perineal lacerations. So what favors a long anterior rotation, that is well-flexed head, is a long good uterine contraction, good uh, gynecoid pelvis, good pelvic floor, there is no premature rupture of membrane. So all these factors favors are long anterior 3 8 of the circle rotation and become normal. <laughs> the cause of failure of the long anterior rotation is that it can be a deflexed head, which is not able to rotate. It can be uterine inertia, that means the contractions are not good. They can be contracted pelvis, the rotation of the head cannot easily occur in android pelvis due to projection of the ischial spine and the convergence of the side walls. There is no enough space in the pelvis to rotate it for a long anterior rotation. 
the legs or the digit will be grown or they can be premature rupture mm -hmm. membrane. So how will manage uh, the labor of these uh, patients? The management of labor in first stage, we have to exclude the contacted pelvis in the cyanoid pelvis where there is a contacted pelvis, we have to exclude it. We have to exclude the presentation of or uh, prolapse of the cord. Inertia or prolonged labor as expected. So oxytocin may be indicated unless there is a contraindication. Contractions are sustained irregular accompanied by marked back ache, which is which means analgesia. We have to avoid premature rupture of membrane by giving rest, by not staining, and avoid high edema and minimizes the vaginal examination. Other management observ observation are as in the normal paper. So is this the extra thing which we are going to get that we have to. We should be aware that it will lead to delayed engagement. The contraction should be proper. We have to restrict our PV examination and we have to rule out any contacted pelvis and cord and cord presentation of prolapse. In the second stage, we can wait for a long duration. We have to wait for the 60 to 90 minute. During this period, observe the women and the fetus carefully. Combat inertia by giving oxytocin unless it is contraindicated. So what are the contraindication of the oxytocin? That there is disproportion, the, there is cephalopelvic disproportion. In that case, we will not give oxytocin. We are saying that there is incoordinate uterine actions. Uterine scar is there. In the previous, uh, previous uterine scar, we have to be very careful in giving oxytocin because it will lead to rupture of the uterus. It can be grand multiparas in which the uterus is very fragile. So the grand multiparas, the we have to give the oxytocin. It's not a complete contraindication, but we have to give it very gently. Then we have fetal distress. So during, if sometimes we give oxytocin, we need to be distressed. Then we have to stop the oxytocin. So during the augmentation of the labor with the oxytocin, we have to carefully watch for fetal heart. One of the following will occur: the long internal rotation occurs in 90 percent that I have already discussed. The direct occipital procedure occur in 6% and the head can be delivered simultaneously or in these cases we require there is no chance of instrumental delivery. We have to aid our delivery with using forceps or the vacuum. In the deep transversal arrest and the persistent occipital posterior position, the labor is arrested one hour following the full dilatation of the cervix in spite of full uterine contraction. It is because of the prominent ischial spine and deflex head and the weak uterine contraction. The management can be. Now in the modern obstetrics for a deep transverse arrest, we have to go for a cesarean section because it will lead to the obstruction. If we feel that the vacuum, vacuum is there, vacuum delivery can be offered to a woman in the deep transverse arrest. With the proper application, the, with the proper expertise of applying the vacuum, proper application as nearest to the occiput will promote flexion of the head. Traction will guide head into the pelvis till it meet the pelvic floor where it rotates. The manual rotation and extraction by the forceps. So nowadays manual rotation, previously manual rotation has a role in the deep transverse arrest, but nowadays there is no role because nobody uh, believes in uh, this uh, manipulation of the uterus because there are more chances of the uterine rupture and uh, complications and their lack of expertise with these uh, manual rotations. The old gynecologists who are there who are expert in the manual rotation, they can even go for the manual rotation or extraction by the forceps, but in the modern obstetrics for a deep transverse rest, we go for a uh, lower segment section rather than for a manual rotation. Under G, the following steps are done. Disinfection, head is uh, grabs uh, by temporarily and pushed slightly upwards into the flexion of the head. Rotation of the occiput anteriorly by the right hand vaginally aided by rotation of the anterior shoulder abdominally towards the midline by the left hand or by the assistant. So we put the right hand of the vagina, we try to rotate the occiput anteriorly and by the left hand we are going to rotate the anterior shoulder that will go abdominally towards the midline. Next action is we fix the head abdominally by an assistant and apply forceps and then we are going to extract it. We have rotation and extension by the forceps. That was the manual rotation. By the forceps, we can also do the rotation. 
but nowadays this need capital concepts are not indicated what we are going to just apply in the modern optics we just apply the outlet concepts with capital concepts are not being used for the nutrition because of the same reason leading to more uh, mental health and mental injuries as well as lack of expertise with the healing forceps the single application the healing forcep is the rotation forceps so we apply this forcep the single application for rotation and extraction of the heart as it has a minimal pelvic cup we have patterns forceps which are originally designed for the dta the axis of the handle is that is to break is 550 degrees and is used to rotation only then conventional process has to be applied for extraction its axis traction pieces used for the extraction so i don't think you have to remember about these things just you have to remember the name of the keyed process which is a which doesn't have a minimal cup or it has a minimal pelvic cup or no pelvic cup at all so it will it, it can help in the rotation and extraction of the head so keyed process is a rotation process that you have to remember so we are not going to uh, use any of this method out of the motor obstetrics at it has a hazardous to the mother and the fetus the head should be engaged for the manual or the forceps rotation of the head then we have the cesarean section it is indicated in the, when there is failure of the other methods which we have learned or there is contact with this or present the previa elderly primary abda or the cord abscess there before uh, you know full dilatation we have to see the cord prolapse is there but it should be a pulsating cord then we have craniotomy if the fetus is dead the method used in the modern obstetrics are vacuum extraction vacuum extraction and cesarean section the uh, so craniotomy can also be done in a dead fetus so with complications i have already discussed about the complication of the man presentation and the man condition so if anybody has any doubt in the complication i why the complication again because this complication we have been asked for example differently the complications are it can be premature rupture of the brain cord presentation because when the head is not very well applied to the cervix the cord which is there lying freely in the abdomen it will come and it will come in the lower segment which is called cord presentation and it can be a cord collapse also when it come out of the vulva from clipper obstructed liver uterine rupture case incidence of instrumental delivery increase incidence of trauma PPH and peripheral infection and increase incidence of perinatal mortality. So I think I'm clear to all of you about the about our occipital posterior position. If anybody wants to ask anything, they can ask me in the chat box. Any doubts? Then I think we can wind up the class. There's no doubt from anybody, so. I think we can wind up.